Hello friends, welcome back. We are studying routing in ASP.NET Web API. So this video is all about convention based routing, which is one of the type of routing that ASP.NET Web API supports. So let us understand it in detail. So convention routing, you can say is basically a traditional way of specifying the root templates. So in this convention based routing, what happens? Web API uses the root templates to determine which controller and which action method to execute. In convention based routing, the root is defined in web API config.cs file. Okay. And which is placed in app underscore start directory. In Visual Studio, I will show you the exact location where we generally specify the root or root template. Now it's a rule that you should have at least a single root template present in your root table to handle the various HTTP requests. So basically what happens, uh, one default root is already created when you create a web API application. Okay. So let me show you it in Visual Studio. So this is our web API basics application. Okay. And in that you will found under app underscore start directory, this web API config.cs file present. And whenever we create an application, okay, at that time, one default root get already added. And we can define the root in this way. So using map HTTP root method, a root can be defined or a root template can be defined. So the first argument is name. Second argument is root template and third argument is defaults. So here uh, the concept of named argument is used. Otherwise you can use positional argument also. So the name should be unique and using root template parameter, you can specify the root pattern. So here how root pattern is specified when API, when literal value is mentioned, it can be anything you can specify it with your own. Then after slash, two placeholders are specified. One is controller and one is ID. Now remember one thing, the value or the name of this placeholder should be controller. It should not be anything else. Means there should not be a spelling mistake. Okay. And since it is mentioned in curly braces, we can say it is a placeholder and it can take a value of any controller. Now another one is ID. This is also a placeholder. Now what can be this? This is basically a name of your action method parameter. Okay. So if your action method is accepting a parameter and its parameter name is ID, you can mention the same here. If it, if it is accepting any different parameter, means having different name, in that case, you can specify that name. Now, the third argument of this map HTTP root method is defaults. Basically, it is accepting one anonymous class. And here, what is mentioned? ID is an optional parameter. Means it is not compulsory to specify the value for this placeholder. It can have that value or it can be null also. Okay. So with the help of this, we can specify many constraints also. Okay. So there are multiple constraints with that help, with the help of that, you can mention all those things. So this is very a uh, simple or you can say a general root template. Okay. So we have one global.asx file also and in that asx.cs file, now, if you are familiar with old .NET application or specifically web applications, then you must be aware about this global.asx file where different events are mentioned and application start is one of the event which get triggered when our application starts first time. Okay. And it, it executes only once. Now, if you observe here, there is one call to configure method of global configuration class. Okay. And to this configure method, we are passing the register method of web API config. And this is the same class where we define the root. So web API config dot register method, which is static method. That's why it is called by class name. So whenever our application start, this method get called and all the routes that you have defined in this register method. Okay. That gets stored in your routing table. And then it get mapped to specific controllers action method. Okay. 
Now, let us understand this routing mechanism in detail. So, let us switch to our presentation. So, whenever your web API framework receives an HTTP request, it tries to match the URI against one of the root templates in routing table. Now, if no root matches, in that case, client will receive a 404 error, which is nothing but a not found error, right? But if a matching root is found in the routing table, in that case, what happens? The next step is to select the appropriate controller and its action. Now, to find the controller, what Web API does? It will add the controller name to the value of this controller variable. So, whatever, suppose you pass the controller name as product. So, what it does? It will pass this product controller name to this controller variable. And then after to find the action method, it will look for the HTTP verb. Means whether your request is get request or your post request, put request, etc. etc. Okay. So okay. based on your HTTP verb, it will try to determine the actions whose name begins with your HTTP verb name. Now all of you are familiar that while naming the web API action method, we have to follow the convention, right? It must starts with HTTP verb. Okay. And then after it makes end with any word, but it must starts with HTTP verb. If you are not following that, in that case, we have to put the HTTP verb attribute above your action method. So based on your HTTP verb, it will determine the action. However, it is also possible to create a rule where action name is included in the URL. Okay. Till now what we studied, how our root appears. Let me show you. This is our root template, right? API, then controller and then ID. And as I told you, controller and ID are what? These are placeholder. And the name of this placeholder should be controller only. It should not be anything. So like controller placeholder, I can mention action placeholder also. Okay. Sorry. I can mention action placeholder also. This, this is possible. So same like your ASP.NET MVC, it can also take a action placeholder. Okay. Now, as I told you, we can specify the other placeholder also. In our default route, we saw that there is one ID parameter. Okay. So this is nothing but a parameter of our action method. So whatever other values available in our URI or endpoint, it get mapped to our action method parameters. Okay. So I hope this routing mechanism is clear. Now we are going to see one simple example. Okay. In our Web API Basics application, we already have this product controller implemented and as well as we have few action methods and that are also tested means like get all method is there which is returning all the products then get product method is there which is giving you a specific product then post message which is posting the data to the method and the last one is the create method which is also a http post method and which is accepting a object of product okay so here what we are going to see since we already tested in this video we are just going to see how our root template get mapped to an action method of the controller so here i did one more thing i copied this root template here in the product controller okay and commented it so everything will be on the single page and we can easily understand this so this root template is already de defined in web api config.cs file okay so same root template i'm going to use here so let us switch to product controller so here as we know api is a constant word it can be anything depending on your requirement. Controller is a inbuilt placeholder and ID is also placeholder and it is nothing but a parameter of your action method. Means this name is nothing but a parameter of your or parameter name of your action method. So whatever you enclose in a curly bracket is a placeholder and it can take any value. Now 
when this get all method will be called just assume that i'll just write down one endpoint here or one uri pattern here say http colon double slash say test or sorry say www dot test api dot com so this is our uh, domain name of our api then we have to use this api word now since we want to call a product controller get all method i have to specify the controller name right but here i will not specify the parameter okay because this method is not accepting the parameter and even there is no need to mention the action method name why because in api the action methods are determined by http verb this is going to be a get request this is what this is a get request right so since it is a get request automatically it will be it will be mapped to this action method and since we are not passing any parameter then definitely this will be the perfect match and that's why this method will get executed now suppose i'll copy this suppose we want to execute this action method in that case my endpoint should be like this product slash one or anything means now we have three indices ranging from 0 to 2 so between 0 to 2 you can mention any value so whenever you will put a id at that time this method will be mapped because again this is a get request and we specify the product controller name and we mention the parameter also and since the id is a root parameter right this id is a new root parameter so since it is a root parameter we can mention it in this way means by putting a slash otherwise the another alternative is what you can do id is equal to 1 this is also one valid way but here what happens you are explicitly specifying your parameter name in the form of query string this is a form of query string and this one is a root parameter so whenever in your root template if you have mentioned your action method parameter name like this means in the form of placeholder then only while calling or while in invoking that action method you can specify this parameter as a root parameter otherwise you have to follow the second alternative this alternative okay question mark then parameter name equal to value in the form of query string you can define it now we'll see how post method will be called again i'm copying this i'll paste the uri pattern so here the most important thing is that my request should be what a post request it should be a post request then here i have to say n question mark n is equal to say test okay you do not need to enclose it in anything n is equal to test now here i can't mention it like this right just a moment i'll write one more url i can't say like this slash test why because we don't have this root parameter defined okay in our root template we have id parameter as a root parameter but we do not have n as a root parameter in that case you have to write a one more root template in that case you can specify your root parameter in this way otherwise you have to follow the approach of what query string then we have one more request right create request so all the about three requests they are following the naming convention of our action method means this method is also starting with http verb get all this is also starting with a http verb that is get product this is also starting with a http verb that is post message but this create 
is not starting with HTTP verb. That's why we decorated this with this attribute HTTP post means we are saying that this action method should be executed when there is a post request. Okay. Now, let me copy this. How will be the call or what will be the URI pattern for this request? Okay, you will pass nothing here. In request body, you will pass the details of the product. So, based on your parameter, means whether it is of type string or of type product, one of these two action methods will be invoked. So, it is differentiated based on the parameter you are going to pass. Okay. So, we already studied the parameter binding. If you are not aware of this parameter binding or I will say model binding, we already studied. So, if you are not aware of that, please watch that video. Okay. I will attach the link in the description below. So, I hope these things are clear to you. Okay. And one more thing I told you that like MVC, you can define one more built-in uh, placeholder here, which is nothing but a action. Okay, means if you are going to follow this root template, then definitely it is going to easy for you. Because in that case, your URI pattern will be like this product slash create because now you are going to mention the name of action method also here what you will say post message slash test and same thing you can define here also so i will suggest you to try this uri pattern or root template with yourself and let me know about it in the comment section so, I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any doubts or any concern, you can definitely write it to the comment section. Thank you for watching.